went down. It was P.H. Uh, Narjale, uh, Stockton, Scott Griffith, and myself. So we were launched, and we, you know, basically blew the air tanks and went down 30 meters, floated the Titan, and we began a descent. Now you have to remember, this is literally the the first descent to depth, you know, other than practice, you know, descents in other locales. So. Uh, we realized uh, very early on that we had weighted the Titan slightly off balance. And the original intent was to go down nose forward and, and kind of go down on a, on a long gradual angle. And we had unfortunately weighted it as heavy, so it, it, it began spiraling. So instead of going down on a gradient, we were going through a very, it wasn't a violent spiral, it was a very slow spiral through the ocean. And we descended through you know, the shades of light until we entered a world of, of utter darkness, a complete absence of light, as you're aware. And uh, during that descent, we would see various phosphorescent creatures in the inky blackness. And uh, all, all systems were off except, you know, basically a couple LED lights and the, uh, the little you know, laptop that they were using to send text messages to the surface. So we basically free fell. I believe it was for two, two and a half hours. I don't, don't recall the exact timeline, but it was a few hours. And uh, because we were spiraling slowly through the void, uh, we were off course and we were caught in the currents and we were in this kind of unusual attitude. So when we were approaching the bottom of the, the seabed, we received a text message. And, and again, communications were very erratic. Uh, we would lose comms, which was not unusual uh, because of the different you know, climactic zones in, in the ocean. It was hard to get signals, but it would come in and out. But we received a text message that we were off course. So at that juncture, uh, we, we were all discussing all these things together uh, jointly. Uh, we decided to throw the thrusters on and correct our course and make our way towards what we believed was the bow. Now, you have to remember that you, you know, the, the Titan only has a sonar that can go out about 100 yards. So when you're at the bottom, you're basically operating in the blind until you actually get within 100 yards of anything. So you, you could actually go down and completely miss the Titanic because it's such a vast area. So, uh, but we were given a heading by the mothership, and we then threw on the port thruster, and when we fired the starboard thruster, it, it failed to activate, and, and as everyone in this board, I'm sure, is well aware, uh, electronics, salt water, and, in, and extremely intense pressure, are, they're just not always, well, they're not compatible at all. So uh, the starboard thruster failed, and we realized that all we could do was spin around in circles, like making right turns. Uh, at, at this juncture, uh, we, well, obviously we weren't going to be able to navigate to the Titanic. So the decision was made to jettison our weights. And if I, and the, there were a number of weights. There were the, the sandbags that were attached. There were also the, the pipe weights. And the pipe weights were released mechanically by rocking the Titan back and forth. And we dropped, I believe, three of the four. The fourth one got stuck, so we couldn't get it off. So we, we, it took us probably 20 minutes before we actually saw a, a perceptible rate of ascent that, you know, other than maybe just a couple feet. And then we began ascending, and, and, I, and again, I'm just, the, these are just very approximate uh, timelines because I don't exactly remember, but I think it was three hours, three and a half hours to come up to the surface, but it was quite a while. But we, um, we came up, at, at, oh, no, we, we, were, we weren't making much time, so we left the port thruster on, and then we began making long spiraling turns, or just long turns to the right uh, during the ascent. So I think we did speed up, so, and I don't remember how long it was. It, it seemed like a long time. But we got up and got back on the platform, and they filled the tanks. We came up, and and uh, then we had to tow it back to St. John for repairs. And the decision was made by Stockton not to put it back on the ship because of the damage that had been sustained on the previous time to take it on deck. So the decision was made to tow it at, at about five to eight knots. Since you paid to go to the Titanic, did you get reimbursed since you didn't make it to the Titanic? Uh, no, I did not. I, I don't 
believe there was any provision to be reimbursed, but Stockton uh, made it clear that if you did not get to the Titanic, you would get another another opportunity. And um, you know, eventually, and, and I, I can't say I was overjoyed that I went that year and, and didn't get to the Titanic, but as it turned out, um, you know, I went back the next year, so I had, I had two expeditions basically for the price of one. And, and you have to remember that you know, this was all in the service of uh, an experimental vessel. Uh, uh, Titan, or Stockton, was not necessarily fascinated by the Titanic. What he was trying to do was, was create a paradigm where he could take people and resources into the abyss. And the Titanic served as a, uh, you know, this iconic destination that people would pay to go to and help him perfect his technology. I mean, that's really what this was about. Did I answer your question? You did.